Hey everyone, thought I'd do a short little video today on some macro photography. It's a topic I really, really enjoy doing, but uh, don't really have the patience for it. But having been cooped up at home for the last mm, six to eight weeks or something, I can't remember now, uh, had a lot of time to do some practice. So at the moment, I am just outside in the front garden, as you can see. Uh, it is a lovely afternoon out here. Uh, but it is quite a bit blowy at the moment, which is not ideal for some of the macro photography I'm trying to do, but that's why I thought I'd start making this video now. So, this is Macro 101. I don't have a dedicated macro lens, but what I do have are a set of three very cheap close-up filters that I bought off eBay a long time ago. Um, at the moment, I have them hooked up to my 300mm f4 lens, which I will show you now. There it is. You see, 300mm f4 lens, and I've got it hooked up to a 36mm, a 20mm, and a 15mm extension tube kit. And that's sitting on my Canon EOS 6D. So, also on the camera, I have my remote trigger. Uh, well, that's the receiver there, uh, my remote trigger, which you can see the brand that I'm using there. Um, it's something I've had for quite a long time and serves me really well for things like astrophotography and doing uh, macro photography as well. So anytime you want to try and trigger the shutter and not bump the camera, highly recommend one of these or the, um, the much cheaper uh, but just as effective alternative of a wired one, which will just plug into your camera. Uh, you might be asking, why a 300mm lens? Uh, great, great question. And the reason for that is, like I said before, I don't have a dedicated macro lens. Uh, and I happened to stumble across a YouTube video uh, the other day, and he was using a set of extension tubes on a 300mm f4 Canon lens, much like mine. Uh, and I was really, really impressed with the results that he, uh, that he was getting. So I've had the 300mm for mm, about 18 months, two years now and uh, it had just been sitting in my cupboard. I hadn't been using it too much um, recently. Uh, and I thought, well, I've got the extension tubes there. I've got a lens that I'm not using. Why not put them to use and see what I can, uh, what I can pull out? Our subject this afternoon, amongst a lot of other things, is this bit of rope that is just, oh, disappeared in the shadows. This bit of rope here, which is just randomly attached to a tree. Uh, the previous owners of the house, I don't know, stuck it up or something, but uh, it's, uh, yeah, an interesting subject and I thought it deserved a bit of close-up attention. So you can see here the camera here obviously, and you can see just here the bit of rope that I'm taking a photo of. So you can see roughly the distance, uh, if I move around a little bit, uh, the distance is probably about a meter and a half, two meters away, maybe about a meter and a half, I think, uh, without being too scientific. Much, much closer than I could get uh, to, and isolating the subject than I could with just the 300 mil lens by itself. So a few other things that I've been doing macros on this afternoon. Uh, this little bit of flower here, which has gone out of focus. Let's see if I can get it in there. There we go. So this flower here and this clump of flowers over there. So as you can see, it's quite a busy background there. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is show you a couple of before and after photos specifically a photo that I took of this clump of flowers with the 300mm lens, just by itself. And what I was able to achieve by stacking the three extension tubes on it, uh, and just show you how much closer I could get to the, the, the subject and how much it threw the background out of focus. Uh, and I think you'll agree, it's, uh, it, it's really a really interesting effect. Okay, so you can see here we've moved inside and here is a collection of all of the macro photos that I've taken over the 
uh, today and yesterday. I wanted to show you this scene here. So this is one of our rosella bushes out in the backyard. Um, with our cool new fireplace there beside it. Don't worry too much about it. So in this bush, you, there's a lot going on. It's really busy. But um, what I've been able to do is isolate some of the buds and some of the flowers. I'll just step through these. So this is one of the flowers in, in that bush there somewhere. Uh, here's one of the pink flowers and you can see again how really uh, separated the subject is from the background. And uh, here's another series of leaves and, uh, and a couple of buds there as well. But I just want to show you uh, some examples of, or another example of some mushrooms that I took yesterday. So here is the, uh, the bucket that the mushrooms are on. You can see them just down here in the, in the bottom corner, uh, bottom half of the screen here. Um, now, that's just taken again with the iPhone just to show you some uh, context of what the photo is. Um, this is the photo that I took with the uh, extension tubes on, so that's with the 300mm and the extension tubes. And this next one here is the edited version of that. So um, I'll just quickly duck into the module here and I'll show you some of the settings. Uh, so contrast, drop the highlights and the shadows. And that's dropping the shadows really just blacks out the, um, the background there. Um, added quite a lot of texture and clarity, uh, a little bit of dehaze and quite a lot of vibrance. So if I click the before, and then you can see the after of quite a lot of the settings there. A uh, little bit of sharpening and quite a heavy vin vignette on that. So if I turn the vignette off, uh, you can see the difference that it makes to the corners of the image. So let's uh, start an edit. Let me go pick this flower here. So I'll go into the while it loads there. So these are all the defaults as you can see. The only thing that I've added is the remove chromatic aberration and the enable profile corrections. I do that as part of the import. So I pretty much, the way I work is pretty much just start at the top and work my way down. So first we'll adjust the white balance. Uh, I usually like to see what it does for auto. That's no, not too bad. Um, but let's have a look and see what else we've got. Clarity's not too bad. Yeah, shade I think is the one which I think is pretty close to auto. It was. So we're going to go with shade because I quite like the colour of the background there. Uh, I usually like to give a bit of contrast. Now I'm actually not looking at the sliders here as I'm changing. I'm just using a mouse and using a scroll wheel and watching the image until it gets to a balance that I like. Uh, highlights will pull down a little bit just to bring a bit more detail into the, the brighter bits. Shadows, in this case I'm going to bring it down a bit too, just to make the subject pop against the background. Once I'll have a play with, boost them up, take them down, uh, I think it's okay, just at default. And same with the blacks, I think I'm going to leave them alone as well. Texture, I'd like to add a, a bit of texture, and again I'm not really looking at the slider, I'm just seeing the difference that it makes to the image. Clarity, I tend not to add too much clarity. Just so I'm just going to add yeah, maybe just plus five there. And then D, we'll just see what that does. Uh, so if we take it to the negative brightness, go to the positive. Again, like um, clarity, I think I'm just going to leave it as that there. Bring a little bit of vibrance into it and back off the saturation just a touch. So now, before we go too much further, let's just have a quick look. So this was the before, and this is the current image. So you can see there's quite a bit of difference there with just a couple of slider changes. Moving down, I pretty much don't touch most of these unless I've got a special, or most of these next sections unless I've got a special thing I want to do. Uh, detail, let's boost up the sharpening just a little bit. Uh, noise reduction, uh, we don't need it this time because I'm using a fairly low ISO. Um, and just to finish off, we'll do a bit of a 
uh, vignette and really just looking to darken the corners of the image a little bit just to bring our focus into the center where our main subject is so again far looks a little bit weird actually it doesn't look too bad but i'm going to pick this one off a little bit and go to about there or about there i reckon and that's pretty much the end of the image so if we do a before and an after and i'm pretty okay with that i don't I like the crop, so I'm not going to change that at all. And um, yeah, that's a pretty quick and dirty edit of that little flower shop.